Welcome back learners. In the last session, we have explored the basic concepts of research for a model UN conference. This week, let us explore the art of putting that research into words or the art of speech making. Now, most of the learners here are still or at some point of time have been students. And as students you must have been exposed to various public speaking scenarios, be it giving a presentation in your class or speaking on stage in front of a school assembly. It's all in some form or the other. public speaking keeping that in mind from your observations what do you think are a few differences between general public speaking and model un speeches pause this video for 2 minutes and write down your responses your possible answers could be time limit topic specific representational formal and diplomatic and professional all these answers are correct and tells us that a model un speech is very different from a normal public speech as discussed earlier a model un speech is supposed to be in third person meaning the speaking delegate should address oneself and any other delegate in third person and should not refer to oneself or other person using any personal pronouns secondly for years in debating and model un circles rumors has it that a better debater is the one who never reads of a paper and this might be true in many cases where spontaneous thinking is the skill needed for the context of a competition but a model un conference is different this takes us to a point that is the core pillar of a model un conference which is that a delegate is not representing themselves but is representing their respective portfolio and every word one says is reflecting the thoughts and stances of one's portfolio thus it's absolutely important for every speech to follow a written pattern of sorts any speech should be bound by a flexible script primarily written to ensure the authenticity of one's word be it writing the whole speeches beforehand anticipating the possible subtopics and directions of the debate or writing speeches in a flexible manner with keywords key points being mentioned with room for improvement on spots commenting on other delegates views and points among others either way one should always speak based on a written document Now as an example to show its importance let us go back to the Russia Ukraine crisis Russia refers to this conflict as a special military operation and Ukraine and its allies refer to this as an invasion Now during a speech which is not backed by a written framework a delegate of Russia might mistakenly refer to this conflict as an invasion or a liberation war or a straight away as an occupation depending on one's personal vocabulary and opinion and this will be highly problematic in a model UN simulation as use of such alternative words can open up one's portfolio to possible legal and diplomatic backlash through this example we can observe the severity of using not only the correct words or phrases but also understand how even small statements or expressions by representatives can change and negatively affect one's foreign policy and apart from keeping one's words in check writing down speeches also ensures that whatever one states in one's speeches is impossible to manipulate by other delegates as one will always have a written evidence of what one intended to say finally to put it in simple words write down your speeches before you deliver it in order to ensure that you are in line with your foreign policy and to have proof of the statements you make here it is important to note that reading out of a paper also helps those who might be hesitant in public speaking in expressing themselves more clearly and articulately over the time This reading out of a paper can be accompanied by pauses and changes in intonations on areas that one aims to highlight which is generally instinctive and adds a sense of connect between the speakers and the listeners. Last week we had learned about how model UN speeches are generally timed. The speaker's lists were timed for 90 seconds and moderated caucus speeches were generally timed for 60 seconds per speaker. Apart from this there are rights to speak motions during the draft resolution discussions or the presidential addresses which to generally are timed for 60 seconds thus conveying long complex perspectives in a short amount of time becomes a challenge for many delegates to tackle this we use the burger method a burger method organizes your research into three sections and helps you deliver your speeches in time But before we explore this method further let us go back to your research at the end of your research you should divide all the content you have gathered into subtopics for example 
let us take the topic of immigration as the agenda sub topics of this can be legal immigration illegal immigration refugees economic impacts of immigration among others it's highly advisable to divide segregate and write down your research into sub topics this way you will have multiple moderated caucus topics or formal informal motions to propose and that too with a ready made speech it is also important that in a committee delegates improvise their speeches from time to time in order to maybe include the comments of other delegates speech or remove a few points that are being constantly mentioned in the other speeches now once you have divided your research into sub topics we finally apply the burger method the burger method is a format in which speeches are traditionally structured imagine a burger what components does a burger have a couple of buns a patty in the middle a few greens in between and additional sauces now imagine this burger to be your speech the upper bun is your argument which is a point on which you differ from your opposing block you need to address the exact point on which you differ and clarify your stance an example of this can be the delegate of russia believes that our special military operation in ukraine is fully justified and is vital to our national security in this statement the delegate of russia addresses the area of conflict that is if the russian invasion of ukraine is justified or not adding to this the delegate also clarified their stance on the issue wherein the delegate mentioned their military operation as justified in terms of their national security in this level one need not explain one's stance and just has to clarify one's stance in a sentence or two stuffing the patty is the veggies and the sauce in the second stage of stuffing part of our burger we focus on the important data points which are both factual and statistical which help to explain our stance here you go back to your stance and collect data which acts as a proof that supports your stance and can act like a tinge of sauce in middle of your burger providing those additional flavors going back to the example the us and the present government of ukraine have been in talks to make ukraine a member of nato an organization that's entire point of existence is to act in opposition to russia or through our special military operations we would like to safeguard the lives of ethnic russians living in ukrainian territory who have been oppressed by ukrainians for years now both of these points can be considered points that would have backed the stance of the delegate coupled with statistics like number of russians living in ukraine or any data related to violent attacks on ethnic russians by ukrainians will add up to the much needed strength of the stuffing part of it this has to be the biggest part of one speech and should be covered in five to six sentences the lower bun is the most effective part of the speech it consists of the course of action the course of action can be solutions and suggestions addressed towards the committee at large and should be to the point realistic and hard hitting these can be both long and short term but have to be precise and short going back to our example the delegate of russian federation thus calls un to condemn this aggressive action of nato and make this war unavoidable russia also believes that if only the world sees and condemns the aggressive actions of states like the usa only then will the world see the lasting peace now these are the examples of conclusions one can give to their speeches the ending must be quick and to the point so that it becomes easy for the committee dais to note down your solution or call for action and mark you accordingly incorporating these techniques in your speech making will be really helpful for you to put your points in time and display the depth of your research correctly here are few points that you should follow for this burger technique to be most effective make sure your point of conflict meaning the top one is really relevant to the debate and is a point you and your opponents actually disagree on in case some other delegate has the same point as you don't worry and work around this by making your point more detailed and try to add more creative solutions to the point make sure you leave at least 10 seconds time at the end of your general speaker's list and utilize this time to take questions to reinforce your point make sure to address only one point per speech give examples and add data supporting each of your points in this way your points are more understandable 
and are easy to understand for both the committee dais members and your fellow delegates finally remember strong points in your speeches not only will directly fetch you marks but also act like a magnet to attract like minded delegates and even sometimes to repel bullies this will help you to gain allies and help you become a stronger player within your block Now let us summarize your learning in this video. A model UN speech should be formal, diplomatic and in third person. It should follow a brief and flexible script that would allow the delegates help articulate one's word and act as proof of one's statements while giving room for improvement. A model UN speech starts with an argument where a delegate strongly states one's stance on the issue at hand. This is followed by the data part which acts as the evidence to the delegate's stance and justifies it. Finally the delegate ends their speech by suggesting a course of action that keeping in mind what the stance and the evidence sheds light on how the delegate on behalf of the committee aims to respond to the issue addressed to in one's argument in our next segment we will explore the gray skill of negotiation and diplomacy and aim to understand its importance in a model UN setting thank you